I was raised in a relatively traditional Chinese family. My parents were atheists, but were also influenced by Taoism, with its idea of keeping the balance of yin and yang, and by Buddhism. Overall, though, we never really involved ourselves in any religious practice, although I had relatives who were Christians. Back then, when I considered myself fully atheist, I didn't appreciate them patronizing and trying to convert me to Christianity. However, since coming to the Abbey, my views have evolved. I can recall so many moments in my humanities class when I would be just hit by the awesomeness of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. I didn't fully understand all the implications, but books such as Augustus' Confessions and Paradise Lost amazed me with their completely different worldview. But at the time, I just did my homework and read without grasping these words' deeper meaning. Until one day in class, a concept really captured my attention. We were discussing Pascal's wager. For the very first time, all these complicated ideas became so clear to me. Using the simple yet very logical device of the wager, Pascal proved that those who rejected the idea of God were wrong. I didn't think that religious belief could be this simple, and I was shocked after Mr. Smith drew a chart on the board laying out all the possibilities of what happens to us after death. Depending upon whether one accepts or rejects God, there are only four possible outcomes. Eternal happiness, eternal misery, or, in two cases, eternal sleep. I know that, in reality, there are probably more options, but the two choices, belief or unbelief, and the four outcomes, were enough to prove Pascal's point for me. If I chose to ignore religion and not to believe in God, I would either end up in eternal misery if God existed, or simply sleeping forever while my body rotted in the ground if God did not exist. But if I chose to believe in God, there would be a 50% chance that I had wagered correctly, and I would end up with eternal happiness. This epiphany faded after class, but it never went away. I remember being in Miss Thomas' class and reading C.S. Lewis. I wondered how it was possible for Lewis, an atheist, to suddenly change his beliefs and become a Christian. I didn't like how he especially pointed out his previous belief and how different he had become since then. But I was wrong. C.S. Lewis did not convert all of a sudden. He gradually came to adopt and accept the idea of Christianity. His thinking changed over time, and then his life changed. And after three years here at the Abbey, I've changed too. I'm not fully Catholic, but I believe in God. I pray before I go to bed. I go off to be blessed during Mass. I really try to be a good person. Although I still have a lot of questions, regarding the Catholic religion, Christianity, and everything else. I am so glad that I really opened my mind and changed my views. If I hadn't embraced all the different books and the ideas I encountered here, if I had just kept going with what I thought was right before I got here, if we hadn't talked about Pascal's wager at all, I wouldn't be standing here delivering this speech. Was I terrified when I realized that everything I knew might be wrong? Yes, I was scared. Change is always scary, but I'm more happy than scared. Without these changes, I would be the same person that I was three years ago, someone unfamiliar with the idea of religion in general. Obviously, I will respect people with different religious beliefs, but I could never have understood how people can be so involved in religious practice, or how people in fact truly believe in what they believe. Here at the Abbey, we're forced to learn about a lot of things, but it is up to each one of us to determine the value of what we learn. Even more important, we must decide whether or not to believe in any of it. 
when faced with new, different, and even utterly foreign ideas, our tendency is to ignore or dismiss them. But if we take those ideas seriously and embrace that difference, we just might figure out what we think, what we believe, and who we are. Thank you.